Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany and this is my 2020 reading goals check-in midway through the year. So I've seen a couple people start doing this on their channels and I just thought it was a pretty good idea since we're about halfway through the year now to kind of evaluate the goals that I set at the beginning of the year and then see how I'm doing and then assess if I wanna change those goals based on my reading to see if I want to do anything different with the second half of the year. So if you've been here for a while and and you've seen my reading goals video for 2020 at the beginning of the year, you'll know that I'm not a big goal setter when it comes to reading because that takes the fun out of it in my opinion. I don't want to feel like I have to check things off a checklist every day, like I'm making myself perform this task. It takes the fun out of it. So I will link that video if you guys want to watch that. And let me just say, if you do, thank God my hair is growing. <laughs> Side note. If y'all don't know, I had to cut all of my hair off from going blonde, which is why I'm growing it back out. It's natural color. Anyways, so definitely some things I'm doing pretty well in based on my goals and then some things I'm definitely going to change. So let's just start out with the number of books that I set as a goal to read for this year. And I put that number at 125. I thought that was pretty attainable. And I really did think that I would kind of blow that out of the water and I would read way more books than that this year. However, I don't think that's going to be the case because it's funny, I would get so many questions about how much time I spent reading and I did a whole video about it. And then some pretty drastic life changes were made having to do with exercising less, which I read when I do my cardio, which means I spend a lot less time reading now than I did before. So because of that, I know for sure I will be reading less books in the second six months of the year than I did in the first six months of the year. So my goal is 125. So far this year, I've read 82. I'm almost finished with two more, but we're at 82 books right now. I still still anticipate that I will get to 125. However, I don't think that it will be much above that unless I do get to catch up on some of the graphic novel and manga series that I've been wanting to, which I really do want to. But as far as full length novels go, I do not anticipate that number being much past 125. And I'm okay with that. I think honestly, my goal will be 100 books for next year because of just seeing the trend in the time that I have to read decreasing. So the first goal that I loosely set for myself for 2020 was to read more Stephen King because he was like an honorary mention in my favorite authors video, which I'm going to update at the end of this year as well, because that has just changed quite a bit since I made that list. So for the first three or four months, I think I read one Stephen King book every month and I found myself not loving a lot of them. And I did DNF quite a few of them. So I read a couple that I really enjoyed and then I read a couple that were just okay and I felt like I was really forcing myself to get through books just for the sake of saying I'd read more Stephen King and I decided to stop doing that. So I really haven't read a Stephen King for quite a few months. I do definitely have plans to try out more of Stephen King's books in the future, but I'm just not going to force myself to read one per month anymore because sometimes I don't feel like reading a Stephen King. And if I'm not in the mood, his books are very detailed and long and character focused and it's just boring to get through if you're not in the right mindset. So I know for sure I want to try reading it this year, but besides that, who knows? Not forcing myself, just going with it. So that goal is off the list. The next loose goal I set for myself was to read more classics this year. And I'm actually doing better in that area than I thought I was. I know I read at least one classic for probably the first four or five months of the year. I just meant classics like Little Women, Fahrenheit 451, The Secret Garden, those types of classics. However, I have really been reading a ton of sci-fi classics this year. So technically I've really read way more classics than I have technically marked under the classics category because if it is a sci-fi classic I still categorize it in the sci-fi category so I'm I'm doing okay with that I still think I'm not going to put the pressure on myself to read one per month anymore because I just I'm so picky with what I can listen to for audiobooks that if I'm not in the mood for it I'm not going to listen to it so if I feel like listening to one I will but I'm not gonna force myself to I will I will probably read more sci-fi classics throughout the rest of the year but I do not anticipate myself reading many just like 
contemporary or regular classics throughout the end of the year just because I'm not in the mood to read that right now and I think it's silly for my life to set goals to read more of a genre just because. Like I know people are always like, I wanna read more nonfiction because I feel like I should or more literary fiction because I feel like I should. And it's like, no girl, like t life's too short. If that's not something that you enjoy, like stop making yourself read it, like literally. You're not gonna be a better human being because you read more nonfiction. You're certainly not going to be a better human being or a more sophisticated reader by reading more literary fiction. Like just read what makes your heart happy. My next goal was to read less young adult books and that has absolutely been accomplished and it's not even on purpose. I'm just prioritizing the books that I really, really want to read and most of them are adult sci-fi and fantasy. So it just worked out well. There are definitely still some young adult books that I plan to read in the second half of the year and I do have to say I've been really picky and choosy about which young adult books that I have chosen to read in the first six months of the year. And so many of them have just let me down that I'm going to be even choosier for the second half because I'm just so sick and tired of wasting my time reading something that I'm so hyped for because it's so hyped on the internet. And then it's just not as good. And I don't mean that it's not a good book. It's probably perfect for the correct target audience or if that is the genre age range that you love to read from. But since that's not my main interest and I'm not the target age range, I just don't enjoy it as much. So although I've really only read probably less than 10 I would guess young adult books this year, I probably will read even less than that. And I think there's several series I was really planning on continuing that I'm just not going to because honestly, there's so many adult sci-fi fantasy books that I wanna get to that I just don't have time to be reading things that are just okay, as bad as that sounds. So doing fantastic on that goal, definitely stepping it up and keeping that goal for the rest of the year. Another goal I had set for myself for 2020 is to read more sci-fi and that's going fabulously, is that a word? we're using it anyways. So I have fallen in love with the sci-fi genre. I'm still very particular about which which ones I really like. I mentioned before that I love the Expanse series and I'm, I'm currently on the third book right now. Totally loving it. I've read uh, quite a few classic sci-fis including the Foundation trilogy by Isaac Asimov. I've started and gotten into the Old Man's War series. I've read things like Hitchhiker's Guide, Ender's Game, just some some really stand out books in the genre that have been talked about so much. And while some have been a miss for me, others I've completely loved and some have made it into my absolute favorites like Iron Gold and Dark Age. So I definitely plan to continue reading more sci-fi, but I don't think that I even need to try to make that a goal because there's just so many books that jump out to me within the genre now that I don't have to like, even try as hard to find ones that I'm really interested in because I just naturally am interested in quite a few. So it doesn't feel like a forced thing whatsoever. So that's another goal I'll be sticking with through the end of the year. One more of my goals was to primarily read library books and then purchase the book after I've read it. That way I can DNF the book and I haven't wasted any money because why not read books for free until you know if you like it, right? Just logic. I've been doing excellent with that. I can't even remember. I think I made, I got some books for Christmas and my birthday that I hadn't read. And then I made one book outlet order, which I like 75% regret. <laughs> um, and I think that's the last time I've purchased a book that I hadn't read. And that was like months ago. So that feels great. All of my books that I'm bringing in are books that I know for sure are part of a series I wanna read or books that I have already read, and that just feels great. I have so few books left on my physical TBR, and so I'll put this in here now. My goal is to have my physical TBR done by the end of 2020, minus The Wise Man's Fear, because you guys know I am rereading The Name of the Wind before I read The Wise Man's Fear, and I'm not doing that until the third book has a finalized release date, because otherwise I'm gonna forget and have to read them again. So that is the one exception on my physical TBR that doesn't have to be read. However, I would really like to have the rest of the books gone off of my physical TBR, and then I plan to only, other than very, very special occasions, very rarely, purchase the books after I have read them from the library. There are some books I have found um, with adult fantasy, especially older ones, 
that you can't find from, I belong to three libraries and you can't find from any three of those libraries. So in that case, I will have to buy the physical or the ebook because otherwise I can't read it. Um, but besides that, I plan on sticking with that goal, continuing on with it because that's just what makes me happy. I pass no judgment whatsoever. If you have 14 bookshelves full on your TBR of books you haven't read, you do you. I don't care at all, more power to you. It doesn't bother me a bit, but just for my anxiety levels in my life and my interest in knowing how my desire to read a book will pass very quickly if I haven't gotten to it, I just want no books on my physical TBR except maybe one or two. The last goal was like a channel goal because I mentioned how I'm not, I don't really, I don't do anything to promote my channel or grow my channel. Um, I don't have like a book Twitter or book Instagram or anything like that. And so I'm, I'm still okay with that. I want it to be very organic. I never want to like force trying to get people to subscribe to my channel, which so I never do. If people find my channel, I'm so happy to have you here, but it's not like a huge goal of mine to just have so many subscribers because I want to be able to talk to you guys and communicate with you guys and I literally love all of my subscribers so much I read every single one of your comments I try to respond to them when I can I used to be able to respond to every single one I just can't keep up anymore but I, I will try harder so I made the goal based on my channel to do like more unique original content and original video ideas and that's just not something I have a desire to do anymore I love watching those videos sometimes if it's like something that is within my realm of interest. However, my favorite booktube videos to watch for like my viewing pleasure are the basic staples. I love watching TBRs, I love watching book hauls, I love watching wrap ups, and I love watching tag videos. And then I also love any sort of videos that allow you to get to know the creator, their personality, and a little bit about themselves through the books they read, like favorite characters or books that describe them. I love things like that. So that's the content I make because that's what I feel passionate about. And I like, I, I also love doing book reviews. I think that I know they don't get a lot of views, so a lot of people refuse to do them. But any book that I felt more than just meh about, I wanna do a book review for because one, it helps me if I can go back and look at it before I read the next book. Or I get to like relive my excitement for that book that I read for the first time when I go back and watch that video. And that is such a cool experience, but I feel like that's just such a staple on BookTube that gets overlooked a lot because that's kind of how I even found out about BookTube because when I made those spoiler free, you can watch them to see if you're interested in picking up the book and if it appeals to you because you'll be able to know, okay, will I like this? Even if you don't agree with my tastes, you'll be able to tell if you like the book based on what I say about it, I feel like. And then the spoiler ones, if you can come back and, and watch it after you've read it, then you can hear somebody's like full gushing thoughts about it. So I love book reviews. So that's just what I'm passionate about. Those are the videos I like and that's what I'm gonna stick to doing. The only one that I've always been on the fence about was the vlogs, just because that is just more like a personal thing and it's a lot of my life, which you see me at the boring times in my life, so it feels very mundane and repetitive and boring from my perspective because it's the life that I'm living and I feel like it's not quality content. So that's why I try to make it mainly focused on the books that I'm reading within it. But you guys tend to love the vlogs so they're here to stay. I definitely don't dislike doing them, so I'm definitely gonna keep doing them for the channel because I think a lot of you guys have told me that you like the vlogs, so they're not gonna go anywhere. I think that those are all of the six goals I made at the beginning of the year and how I kinda wanna tweak some of them. I also think an additional goal I'm gonna give myself is to try to not overwhelm myself with too many series at one time. There are some huge series I'm in the middle of right now that I'm catching up on. One being The Wheel of Time, which is 14 books I've only read four of, and I want to stay so grounded in that world to where I'm really consistently reading a book. I do not want to read them all back to back to back and do marathon them because I love this world so much. I will be devastated when it's over and reading a series like this, like any of these large series I'm going to talk about, 
you can really burn yourself out if that's all that you read. Just in my personal opinion, I know I will burn out. So I like to read them periodically. I'm in the middle of Malazan Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson. I have read the first three books out of 10 in the main series. And those are too hard and confusing for me to marathon. I would lose my mind if I tried to marathon those books for the first time through. And I just am not in a rush to finish them. I want to take my time because I have to dedicate a huge chunk of time to one book and fully invest myself in it and immerse myself in the world. I'm on the third book of the Expanse series by James S.A. Corey. I would like to finish that. I'm doing a reread of the Stormlight Archive to catch up on book four out of a 10 book series. So there's a lot of really dense high adult fantasy and sci-fi series that I'm in the midst of. So so I really want to try to be careful about how many new series I start. Now, if I, I get my books from the library, so if I don't have access to any of these books, I don't mind picking up a new one, but I want to be careful when like postponing books of a series I'm in the middle of to start a new one, because then it's just like, it's just too much going on. So my goal is to sort of rotate through these series that I'm reading very consistently while being really picky and choosy with the rest of the books that I add in for filler. And going along with that, I'm going to try to make my TBRs smaller and less concise. I think because I read through the library, it's very hard for me to have a very specific TBR because I don't know when loans are coming in exactly. So I will probably try to give about four or five books that I know I'll get to and then maybe three or four that are options because I really only anticipate myself reading between five and seven books per month from now on just based on the types of books I'm reading and the size of them and the amount of time I have to read whereas the beginning of the year I was reading 16 books per month. It's, it's just not possible anymore with the series that I'm in and all of you guys are so kind and wonderful and you're like Brittany take the pressure off yourself so that's what I'm doing. But yeah that is my check-in for my goals for 2020. I'm pretty pleased with my reading. There's definitely nothing that I'm upset about or mad. I'm not behind. I don't feel pressure or stressed. Even if I feel it in the moment in my reading vlogs when you guys see it as a whole I'm not out here like stressing about how much I'm reading every day so it's all good in the hood. Yeah, I'm just I'm just happy and I'm excited for all of the wonderful books that I know I will get to read in the next six months of the year because I can only imagine. I know a lot of people have said 2020 have, hasn't been a good reading year for them, but I have just read so many phenomenal books and I know there's so many more to come. So how are your 2020 reading goals going if you have any? If you guys want to tell me like what one goal is that you're changing and then one goal that you're sticking to, I would love to chat with you guys about it in the comments. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.